Subman25 Gamers, welcome to today's video. Today's video, we're going to be talking about how to set up your depth chart. And uh, we're going to be going through a new series where we're going to be breaking down every 32 teams uh, on how we would set up a depth chart for them. Um, and, and why I want to do this is I want to get into a little bit more into how to set up a depth chart of Madden 25 as we prepare for the next uh, Madden to come out. And uh, what we want to do to set up our depth chart is we want to go into um, our customized page. We want to go over to coaching, or we're going to go over to manage rosters. Now, one little tip I like to do is I like to go to manage players first. And so, for example, today's team breakdown, we're going to be doing the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And I like to just kind of go through the roster because what's cool about this is you can have the same tab open when you switch things, whereas you can't in depth chart. So, for example, if I want to see what everybody's hit power rating is on the defensive side, I can set the hit power and then I can just scroll through and see. Okay, and it's really, it's really just kind of a, a luxury, luxurious way to do this, but it is what it is, and it's just something that I always recommend starting out if you want to kind of get really in deep. Uh, but today I just want to show you a depth chart uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals, kind of walk you through how to set it up. And uh, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using our shotgun empty bunch offense that we broke down a couple weeks ago in combination with our 4-3 defense that we broke down a couple weeks ago as well. So that's how the roster is set up. So we're going to have Josh Johnson at quarterback, uh, mainly because his 88 speed, and he has the best throwing power out of all the quarterbacks, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he does have the best, highest throwing power. Uh, his accuracy is not very good, but he really doesn't miss that many throws, to be quite honest. And uh, we're going to try to kind of mainly use him as a kind of a scrambling quarterback. Our running back, of course, Giovanni Bernard. Uh, what we like to note about Giovanni Bernard is his catching, uh, and this is why we have him starting. Uh, he has the 77 catching traffic, 80 catching, uh, best on the team outside of the fullbacks here. But he's very good, and we like to use him in that gun empty bunch because we can run and pass to him. Um, if he gets hurt, we like to put in Pierman because he still has that speed. Doesn't quite have the catching that uh, Burkhead does, but Burkhead doesn't have anywhere near the speed that Pierman does. So I think the speed is a little bit more important uh, when you're talking about that gun empty bunch formation. Uh, when we check down late in the game and we want to run the football, uh, we want to put in Ben Jarvis Green Ellis because of his 94 carry rating. Uh, as well as his, I believe he has a pretty good trucking rating. It's 88 trucking, 93 stiff arm, and 88 ball carrier vision. Um, he's not very fast, uh, but he does uh, move the pile, and he's a very good short yardage back. At fullback, now this is a quick note. Fullback is where we get a lot of things done uh, for our uh, special teams package. And so I, I like to put the best impact blockers at fullback. Um, because if I want to, I can RB sub them out in game. But you see, I have 76 impact block, 72 impact block, and then I'm going to actually substitute. Um, I'm actually going to substitute in Gresham at this third slot because I'm going to show you a little tip later on in the video. Um, at wide receiver, we have Avell Hawkins at the three slot. Uh, this is important because he's going to be running those. Uh, jet sweeps, so he has to be at the third receiver slot, the way we set up the roster. Um, and then we have Marvin Jones over Muhammad Sanu, uh, mainly due to the speed rating. But another thing that obviously sets them apart is the catch and traffic is a little bit higher with Jones. The spec catch is a little bit higher. And just everything really is just a little bit better with Marvin Jones. But Muhammad Sanu is a really good backup. Now, one other quick note is the fifth wide receiver is on your special team. So I like to put the best hit power uh, at that fifth slot or the best tackler. Uh, just, just to kind of even go a little bit farther uh, in depth. And so, like, for example, Muhammad Sanu happens to be the best pursuer. But let's see about the tackling. See if we have a decent tackler in here. We really don't have a good one. So I would recommend putting Sanu at the fifth receiver slot. So because he's going to be the running down on special teams. Tight end, I like to substitute in two tackles uh, behind the number one tight end because they are starting on special teams. And of course, Tyler Eifert starts on special teams as well. But I, I like him over Jermaine Gresham, even though Gresham is rated a little higher. Gresham is a little bit more physically gifted than Eifert. But as you can see here, Eifert has 87 catching, 84 catching traffic to, to Gresham's 82, and 89 spectacular catching to Gresham's 84. Um, and also, of course, a lot higher catching in general. 
Another quick note about Tyler Eifert is his impact block is a little bit better than Jerrain Gresham. And that's why I would like to put him in there uh, where we have him. As far as tackles, I just try to put in the best impact blocking. Uh, there's really not a whole lot of thought outside of that that goes into it. I haven't really discovered a step-by-step -step method to do your offensive line, uh, but if I do, I will let you guys know. All right, and so your left end, um, I like to put in – for this team, I like to have Carlos Dunlap here. And uh, for my backups, I like to substitute in uh, linebackers that have really good finesse moves, uh, really good uh, pass rushing skills. Because when I want to check down maybe to a dime package or a nickel package, uh, I can have the four DNs package and I can put all those guys on the field. So, for example, I like to put in Sean Porter and... Um, uh, Jason Demachi, uh, both of those guys are pretty good, and so like I like to put them at the second string uh, positions here. So Demachi here, and then of course we uh, uh, my actual backup. If they, for example, if they get hurt in my four three set or whatever, I like to have Margus Hunt as the backup because he's a pretty good combination of speed and strength. Um, but as you can see, this is kind of like how I would go through and set one up. The right end for my defense. I like to put in James Harrison because out of that 4-3 under, the Michael Cross has that guy going in, the defensive lineman going into a hook zone. And as you see, Harrison also does a pretty a lot better job than Johnson at holding down an edge. So he's going to do a lot better in, on that island over there on that left side and also has higher zone coverage uh, than Johnson just a little bit. And that leads me to my next point. I like to put Michael Johnson at the left outside linebacker because he's now on the strong side of the formation with the 4-3 odd because you have Carlos Dunlap and you have, let me go back to the defensive tackles really quick. This is kind of important. I like to put Atkins at the second because still is going to be on the stronger side and Atkins is going to be on the weaker side and it balances everything out. Uh, but back to Michael Johnson, that's why it's the same reason is I want to put my stronger guys on my weaker side and my weaker guys on my stronger side so that I become balanced and they eat, they, they oppositely equal each other out. As far as backups go, I like to put the uh, um, the backup linebackers are on your special teams. So I like to put in guys with high hit power, guys like James Harrison here. Um, my next one, I probably have Vontez Burfitt. Uh, I like to put him there. And then the right outside linebacker, I've got Mal Luga there. So you see kind of the thought process with those backups. Uh, of course, the reason I start Ray over Vincent Ray over Ray Maluga is because he has better, um, he has the same speed, but he has a little bit better um, coverage abilities than Maluga does. As you can see here, uh, he has, he still has high tackling, and he's not, he doesn't have highest block shedding, but he, neither does Maluga. You see that 74 block shed, but what really makes the difference is Vincent Ray has 79 zone coverage and 66 man coverage. While Mataluga has 55 zone coverage and 45 man coverage. And that's kind of the main difference between the two. Um, and I like my backers to be able to cover so that I can stay in the 4 3 odd against 3 and 4 and 5 wide sets. Um, and then I have Vontas Burfus here. Again, I want to make my weak side my strength. And the right outside linebacker is going to be on the weak side of the formation. And you see here he has pretty good strength. Not as high as Maluga, but just a little bit less. Uh, but one thing I do like about Vontez Burfick a little bit better than Maluga is he has better block shedding than Maluga. He has better tackling than Maluga. He has better hit power than Maluga. He has better pursuit, or the same pursuit. But what I also like is the zone coverage. You see the coverage ability is phenomenal from Burfick's, and uh, that's why I like to play him. Uh, cornerbacks, I like to put, um, sometimes I like to put safeties, but with these uh, Bengals here you see, I like to put these two guys in at cornerback because of their 60s uh, strength, whereas Terrence Newman and Adam Jones aren't going to be able to make the same difference in the run game uh, as Leon Hall and Drake or Patrick is. And then one quick note, um, the corners in the three and four slots are also on your special teams. So I like to try to get some guys in there with decent hit power uh, so that I can go down and, and get some hit stick fumbles. Um, and then one other final note here is when you go into like a dime or quarter package, I like to take Kirkpatrick and Hall and I like to put them on the inside. And here's why. As you can see, if you guys know anything about two man under, the outside uh, press coverage is it doesn't matter on your press rating. So that's why I like to put these two guys on the inside because if you if you know anything about two men or also, the inside slot guys won't press. 
but you can manually press them but when you manually press them that takes into account their press rating so that's why I like to put in these two guys and if I'm in a dime package I'll substitute these two guys into the slot and then I'll bring Newman and Jones in on the outside because if I'm in a dime I'm not necessarily going to be playing the run that's just a quick little uh, extra tip and then of course if I'm in quarters I'm going to put Guy in with that 83 press coverage uh, so that I can have pretty good press all across the board um, Moving on, free safety here. I like to put in Nelson. I just leave him in there. He's got the speed, the strength, everything, uh, except for the head power rating is really the only thing that he doesn't have. And then, But, again, your second string free safety is another guy that's on your special teams. So I have Sean Williams in here. And uh, take a look at this man's hit power rating. It should be pretty high. I think it's in the 80s. Uh, as you see here, 85 hit power. And then, of course, strong safety, Taylor Mays, uh, with the speed and the strength. He's actually the most important hit power guy on your special teams, and that's why I have him here. He has the best hit power, the best speed, uh, and the be all the best attributes for that right there. And then, of course, Ilka in the 4-3 odd, the strong safety is on the left side, which is the weak side of the formation. So I have Ilka here for that uh, high rating in in terms of strength and pursuit and tackling and all that. Uh, so that's how I do the depth chart. And then one interesting note here about the kick return, I like to substitute uh, some guy with good impact block. As you guys remember from the fullback, uh, I like to put in Clark Harris. He has like 65 impact block, which is pretty decent. And he's going to be able to clear the way for McKay Leap. Uh, what I like to base this off of, my kick returner, is I like to go with the guy with the highest speed and acceleration. And as you see here, McCaleb has the highest speed, not necessarily the highest acceleration, but in a kick return, you don't really need to get from zero to 100 fast, uh, but when you need to have that breakaway speed, and so McCaleb has that. But as a punt returner, I like to put in the guy with the best combination of speed, agility, and acceleration, which is Avell Hawkins followed by McCaleb in that situation, in that regard. Um, so anyways, guys, that's a little bit of a, uh, an explanation on how you would go about setting up a roster for the 4-3 odd and the gun empty bunch uh, scheme. And I'm going to try to have a gameplay with these guys coming shortly. Uh, but that's going to be the video for today. Thanks for watching. It was a little longer. Hope you guys like this. If you like videos like this, uh, let me know by retweeting this video and uh, leaving a like rating below. Thanks for your time today, guys. I hope this video is beneficial. And I uh, look forward to talking to you guys soon. Thanks a lot. See you later.